Would I Lie to You, the show that celebrates the art of lying. On Lee Mack's team tonight, the England star who once beat Wayne Sleep. Luckily, it was in I'm a Celebrity and not with a cricket bat. It's Phil Tufnell! <laughs> and a splendid comedian who likes to satirise the great and the good. So it'll be nice for him to have a night off and mix with us lot. It's Marcus Brigsaw! <laughs> And joining David Mitchell tonight, an actor and comedian who, during his 13 years as a drama teacher, said he found his pupils inspirational. They inspired him to leave teaching and become a comedian. <laughs> Greg Davis! <laughs> and as one of the longest-serving presenters on Blue Peter, she became an expert at explaining things in a way that a child could understand. Excellent training for sitting opposite Lee this evening. It's Connie Huck! <laughs> Right, we start with uh, round one, which is Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the truth from the lies. And, Greg, you are first. Am I? You are, yes. <laughs> <laughs> For my first term at university, I rented the bathroom in a student house and slept in the bathtub every night. <laughs> Greg. Yes. Before we even start this, can you stand up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there'll, there'll be no, unless David stands up with me, there'll be no perspective. David? In fact, let's have proper perspective. Connie, can you stand up? <laughs> you know the question. <laughs> yeah. What's the answer? Uh, well, I just uh, hung off the end of the bath. As I hang off every single bed that I've ever slept in, it's... No, it's no, 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 no. You definitely don't hang off a bath. No. Like, you hang <laughs> off a bed. Because Beds a bed flat. go like that, and then you hang off. Yeah. The you have to go up and cross and hang off. <laughs> it's thing... all, but you're not a snake, Greg. The thing <laughs> what actually uh, drove me to change my circumstances was that I was genuinely... I was bruising the side of my... Uh, cheek regularly by waking up in the morning and clanging into one of the taps. Yeah, well, Can I ask why on earth you would sleep with your head at the tap end? <laughs> <laughs> that is mad. Yes, well, you know, I was 18 years of age and I mainly lived off uh, Thunderbird wine, so bad so decisions putting... were my forte at that period. <laughs> so did, you have, did you have a bed? No. In the house? Did you, oh, oh, so that was the reason you was there in was, the bar? There was a... There was a well, um, why did you think you was in the bar? <laughs> Cho I chose to, Phil, yeah. How many other people were there in the flat? Uh, three. Three people, what, three beds? Yeah. Why would you not sleep on the floor next to the bath? We had a giant uh, 1970s sofa that had a particularly... a peculiar cor corner unit, mm. and I mm. took, um, both cushions from that corner unit and they fitted in the bath perfectly and it was incredibly comfortable. So, hang on, it wasn't a freestanding bath? A roll-top? Yeah, was it a roll-top freestanding bath? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a freestanding bath, but the, but the end of the bath projected out into the room. Where was this, Greg? Which town were you? Were you? Was this Oxford or Cambridge? <laughs> <laughs> it was in Isleworth in West London. <laughs> It was only because of a, a, a mix-up in housing agreements. Uh, we soon sorted out after a term. I only had to do it for a term. What was the mix-up? I'd agreed to move in with these three guys and we got the wrong size house. <laughs> Hang on, that's not, that's not a mix-up, that's just stupidity. There yeah, was well, four of you and you got a three-bedroom house with it. Been a bit of a mix-up. <laughs> the boys blamed me, which is why I got the bath. Why did they blame you? Because I was the one who booked the house. <laughs> How did you get into university? <laughs> So, Lee, what are you thinking? Marcus. I think it's too preposterous to be true. Mm. The taps, Phil? taps for me, you don't, if you're going to sleep in a bath, you don't put your head no. up the taps. Silly. I think it might be true, but I'm not going to over... Oh, well, you're the skip. You'll cut the armbands, son. I might be the skip. Do you get armbands if you're a captain? <laughs> Only if you can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I don't know this is in the spirit of this game, this is true. <laughs> That was sufficiently moving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with it. I'm saying it's true now. 
What okay. are you saying, Skippy? Should we say true? True. Not yeah. Skippy, Rob, not Skippy. <laughs> That's no good. Right? That's I'm not going to go and go and fetch help. I'm a Skip. Right? Someone's fallen into a mine shop. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, mate. True. We're, true. True. We're, true. We're going for truth. You're saying it's true. Greg Davis, were you telling us the truth or were you telling a lie? Do you feel, David, any sense of genuine competition in this game? Yes, I do, yeah. Then I think you're going to like me very much. It was a lie. Oh. <laughs> Yes, it was a lie. Greg didn't sleep in his bathtub every night for his first term at university. Right, Phil Tufnell, yes. you're next. Right. OK. I'm haunted by a recurring dream in which I'm a potato. <laughs> the dreaming realisation that you're a potato yes. manifest itself? Um, I'm being chased. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah, of course, because potatoes get chased all the time. <laughs> I'm being chased by a pitchfork. How right. do you know you're a potato? Um... Because you can't move. <laughs> no, 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 I can't. I've got... It's like Mr Potato Head, wear a little trilby hat, little legs, and I'm running along the garden <laughs> like that. Uh, with a pitchfork trying so to poke a... me. And I'm sort of climbing up trees and things and the pitchfork sort of going for me and... Has it ever caught you? Um, no, it has never caught me yet. Oh. And then, uh, just as it is going to catch me, I think I wake up. What do you think that the pitchfork wants to do? Are you, are you, oh. Is it attempting to harvest it's a, you? It, it, it's a family show. <laughs> I think all the symbols... <laughs> Heavy with symbolism, David. Yes, it is. I mean, the, yes, there's the a lot sturdy of steel of the pitchfork, mm. the soft, <laughs> pliant flesh of the potato. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm getting a little say... worked up just thinking about it, to be honest with you. He didn't say it was boiled, did he? I think it's baked. Baked? Oh, it is baked. <laughs> a baked potato. So you're a, you're a baked potato? I, I think I'm a baked... What, what are you doing in the garden if you're already cooked? <laughs> How long have you had... This stream. I've had it. He only has it when he's mashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had quite a bit actually. You know, they're, they're, it's quite at the forefront of my dream. I'm just sitting here listening to you. You could be related to Len Goodman from Strictly Come <laughs> Dance. <laughs> could you? Could, could you just yeah, say for me? Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Your Paso Doble was lovely. I liked it. It was cool. You're a bit over there, but you're trying hard. I'm going to give you six. I'm doing Len Goodman. Strictly come dancing. What do you think, David? Uh, well, it's possible, isn't it? What do you think? Uh, I'm not convinced. I think it's, a, without question, a lie, because when he was asked how the potato was moving, I actually saw Phil's brain working to think of Mr Potato Head. Yeah. It is true that lots of people have dreams, don't they, where they're being sort of chased, don't they? That's quite a, a natural thing. Yes, generally they, they, have, they haven't become a root vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> you think it could be true, don't you? Look, my brain is shot <laughs> by this game. I think anything could be true. <laughs> I am so sure it's a lie. Well, we're going to say it's a lie, then. So it's going to say it's mm. a lie. OK. Phil Tufnell, were you telling the truth or were you lying? I was telling... <laughs> no! It's true. Uh, Phil is haunted by a recurring dream in which he is a potato. Uh, there's, a, there's a technical term for Phil Tufnell turning into a potato. It's called evolution. <laughs> and our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Ian. <laughs> Sorry, even before we start, I can tell you now, lads, this man does not know David Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Connie, what is Ian to you? Um, this is Ian. When he brought his lizards onto Blue Peter, one of them went missing. Later that evening, I found it in my handbag. <laughs> All right. David, what's your connection? 
Uh, this is Ian. I sat next to him on a plane and he had such a fear of flying that I had to hold his hand throughout takeoff and landing. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out David Mitchell might know this man really, really well. Uh, Greg, how, how do you know Ian? Um, this is my friend Ian. Uh, one night after getting drunk together, he was wrongly arrested on suspicion of murder. <laughs> So there we have it. Connie's, <laughs> Connie's lizard loser, David's terrified passenger, <clears throat> or Greg's falsely accused friend. Where do you want to start? Um, okay. So Ian here bought lizards to a flagship BBC ch children's program yeah. and left going, well, you, you know, you don't always go home with the same number no, of I'm lizards. I'm the great thing with Blue Peter is if you lose an animal there, they'll make up a name for it. <laughs> What type of lizard? Yeah. Well, there was a selection of lizards. He mm. bought in about eight or ten lizards, yeah. and there were chameleons. And what did, did of one of them change its colour to the same as your handbag? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's getting lost. It wasn't a chameleon. It's a actually. lizard. What no. was it? It was a lizard. What Is was it? your handbag what made? Oh, the handbag was made of snake. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Whereabouts, whereabouts were you at Blue Peter when you found the lizard in your hand? No, I wasn't. At, I was actually in my car and the, oh. my handbag was on the passenger seat. Yeah. So and you opened the, your bag to get some money out or something? I um, was in the multi-storey car park and mm. I wanted, I'd stopped and I just wanted to check that I had my phone. Right, and OK. So I was, and then I was so like... You opened it and did you go, uh, hello, hello? <laughs> <laughs> I had a theory that someone put it in as a joke, but I don't know, mm. and I've not. Oh, the wacky days of Blue Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's in the spirit of this game, but it really is true. I'd like to say I'm not stupid enough to fall for this again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am. OK, right. David. Yes. Just remind us again of your implausible story. <laughs> Well, I was on a plane next yeah. to Ian, and he, his fear of flying was such that I had to hold his hand during takeoff and landing. And where were you going from and to? I was going from uh, Gatwick to... That's an airport. Think of another one now. <laughs> <laughs> Corsica. Gatwick to Corsica? Yeah. And what did he say? Was there any, uh, for want of a better word, foreplay, or did he go straight down? <laughs> And it was on takeoff. Yeah. He just suddenly he started. What? He, he started sort of making agitated noises. Please, <laughs> please, can you do the demonstration? <laughs> I think we all want to see the agitated noises. Yeah. No, Go I, on. as I remember it, it was. I mean, it's just sort of. Uh, <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't the engine, David? Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, Lee. I'm sure it wasn't the engine. So basically, so he's standing agitated. Yeah. Has he grabbed your hand? Then he grabs my oh, there's hand. There's no talking. There's not. Do you mind if uh, I? He's just gone. Not at that point. No. You slag, David Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you say? Do you mind? I'm a married woman. I mean, what did you do? I, I don't. I don't think I said anything. You know why he's grabbed your hand, do you? You know he's. Well, I, th I assumed it was. I didn't think it, it was sexual attraction. Right. But it's <laughs> very sweet of you to leap to that conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> did, did either of you have fellow travellers with you? Uh, no. No, we, we were, were both well, just flying to Corsica <laughs> yeah. to see what <laughs> might happen. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing you made on the plane, maybe. <laughs> and this happened again when you came in for landing? After we became, so when it levelled off, yeah. when we became fully airborne. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that sounds like a virus. <laughs> <laughs> He, he then said, he sort of apologised and said, I'm really sorry, I'm, 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 I'm just got, I freak out sometimes on a plane. And I said, oh, you know, not to worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet that can't be me. I once stroked a girl's back while we were having a very difficult re-entry over... Uh, <laughs> well, over now... Heathrow, coming into Heathrow, and I didn't know her and she was crying, and I huh? just reached out. Yeah. And just stroked her back. There and was held a reason why she was crying, wasn't there? <laughs> the madman behind was stroking her back. I wasn't behind her. I was, I was like that with her. I was going, no, it's okay. It's, no, look, it's fine. This is just turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> she 
honestly, this is this is nothing. This is nothing, honestly. This is this is normal, really. This bloody hell. Oh, this, not really. And she was quietly sobbing. I mean, it was quite. I'm BAFTA nominated. I should point that out. Um, so these things do happen. Yeah. That's they they definitely there. happen. There's definitely people getting nervous on flights. I think we have to deal with Greg's yeah. story. Go on, Greg. Let's have it. I uh, got drunk with Ian. Um, and later he was arrested wrongly on suspicion of murder. Um, thank God that bit's in. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the, what's the, what, what happened? Um, well, I, I wasn't really part of it because we both passed out. It was a, a college ball and right. we all drank vast amounts, particularly Ian and I drank uh, a ridiculous amount and then both collapsed. The last thing I remember is Ian falling down and, uh, and him obviously being horribly hurt. And... Uh, I woke up on a carpet and ran no, upstairs. Nice change from the bath. <laughs> Not in the bath. <laughs> I ran upstairs and he was sitting up in his bed, uh, honestly looking, his face was like a swollen, like a pumpkin. And uh, then he told me that that night, uh, when he'd been stumbling about drunk, he'd been arrested for murder because someone with a similar facial wound had murdered someone in the town. Someone with a similar <laughs> oh, so the facial wound from falling? Yeah. And someone, someone with a similar facial wound had murdered somebody else. Yeah. That's we, unlucky. Where so was this? What, where so was the... this? <laughs> Why did they... How did they know he wasn't the murderer? What was the defining point in the interview? He told me that they had questioned him for hours and eventually he said to the police, and I think this is a quote, I'll be honest with you, lads, I could well have done it. <laughs> It upsets me to think that police respond to double bluffs like that. <laughs> and just to be clear, it, it was proven at the end that he had absolutely nothing to do with it. Correct. Right. Obviously, is... otherwise he wouldn't be here. Right. <laughs> we never established just why David was going to Corsica. <laughs> On his own. Was it Club 18 to 30 again? <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was a holiday. I was going on holiday with a group of friends, but I could only go a day after everyone else. They made those rules, did they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, please, team. Is Ian Connie's reptile wrangler, David's frightened flyer, or Greg's suspicious friend? Which one are you going for? What do we think, Phil? I quite like Connie. Well, we all do. Well, there you go. <laughs> Focus yeah. no, I can imagine a bit of blue PT. He looks yeah. like a chap who might sort of keep lizards. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I, I'm slightly leaning towards Greg, only because I don't, I don't believe David. Um, I'm inclined to think that Connie's story is, is true. Oh, go on then, Connie, if, you, if you've suckered these two idiots into it, I'll go along with that. <laughs> Ian. Would you like to reveal to us your true identity? My name is Ian. Whilst at college with uh, Greg Davis, we got very drunk oh, one night and uh, was wrongly arrested on suspicion of murder. When I ran up in the morning, he was sitting upright in bed and his head was three times its natural size. <laughs> and I went, oh, my God, mate, are you all right? And he looked at me <laughs> like this and went, we've gone too far this time. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth but against the clock. We will start with... <coughs> uh, Lee, yes. Of course. I once had to show my boss an intimate area of my body to prove why I was late for work. <laughs> Part of your body, and why did that prove that you were late for work? It was my. Uh, well, I think we all know what I'm talking about. I don't. No. <laughs> well, let's call him Mr. Wee Wee. Do you actually have to show it to him? I didn't. Well, I, I didn't have to. He didn't say. You elected. I say. <laughs> say prove it get it out but i could tell he was doubting me you i said it. honestly look and i got it out so what was what was it what <laughs> that's the bit they're all waiting for yeah. David. <laughs> what did it prove mr was, wee was wee it... had banged his head <laughs> <laughs> what on what on is a good question yeah. the ceiling we don't get <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, basically, uh, I, I, was, I was lying in bed. <laughs> and I was naked. And I think there was a it... tiny little bit of glass in the bed. And it, would, it was, just wouldn't stop bleeding. So I had to get some tissue paper. I wrapped it round quite a lot, and I can't lie, it ended up looking like Mr Bump. <laughs> It, it was blue. It was blue. <laughs> yeah. I just put lots of it on, and then I just told him the truth. I and, said, and sorry I'm late, there was an incident. Told him the incident. He went, like that, as if to say, you're not telling the truth. I said, do you want to see it? Whizzed it out. He went, oh, it's Mr Bump. So every time, so <laughs> <laughs> every time someone raises their eyebrows at you, your instinct is to get your penis. <laughs> <laughs> stop it, Greg, stop it! You know I can't help myself. <laughs> stop it! He made you shit. No, he didn't make me. He at never point made me do it. Right. I no. Just, All I he was... did was give you the sign. The thing is... <laughs> Stop it, Greg! Yeah. You were in no position to deploy it. I... I... It was quite well covered. It was yeah. full of bandaged tissue yeah. paper. So it was, it was easy to get it out and keep my dignity. In fact, it was quite... <laughs> I was quite proud of it. It was like this. I was like, I said, you'll never look at it, mate. Fainted. Get used to it. <laughs> David, what do you think? Is he telling the truth? Let's have a decision for uh, <laughs> Connie. Well, I could weirdly believe it. Yes, I could believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a very extreme story to have made up. It's too much, so it must be true. Yeah. You're saying true? Yeah. Yeah, we're saying yeah. true. You're saying true. OK, Lee, truth or lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. Lee went on to a successful career in entertainment while his boss went on to antidepressants and a course of trauma <laughs> therapy. Next. <coughs> it's David. I recently bought a cat, but took it back a day later because our personalities clashed. <laughs> Once again, David is mixing up the word cat and wife. <laughs> <laughs> what was the matter with his personality? What were you clashing on? <laughs> well, um, the, the use of claws. <laughs> he didn't like that, did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was he scratching? Scratching, well, slightly me, but, uh, but also furniture quite vigorously. Scratching your furniture. Yeah, there was a sort of corner of a sofa mm -hmm. and a corner of a table. Okay. Corners. <laughs> always the corners. <laughs> yeah, always corners. Was, he, was he a kitten when you got him? No, sort of. I think sort of about two. Two years old. That's yeah. quite quick. Why did you buy a two-year-old cat rather than a kitten? <laughs> Well, it came from Battersea Cats and Dogs Home, yeah. which I, I thought so that's really like a responsible it. place yeah. to source a pet, yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than, yeah. you know... Did you pay for the cat? Um, n no. Oh. No, it was a sort of, you, you know, you home it. You home it? You give it a home. <laughs> oh, I see. So it was, it was a home. I thought you meant you threw it out the window yeah. like a pigeon. <laughs> did you? Yeah. The cat. Yeah. I, uh, did they come round and have a look at where he was going to stay? No. Did it, no? No. No, it did with mine. Yeah, well, that's your, that, <laughs> that's your history, Phil. <laughs> that's, that's just you. That's just you. <laughs> what colour was it? What, what, what kind of style was it? Style. <laughs> what sort of... It's Art Deco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of breed was it? It was a uh, tortoise shell. Tortoise with shell. With sort of the odd blotch. <laughs> you took it back after one day. Yes. <laughs> How long was it in your house before you went, oh, this is rubbish, <laughs> this is going back? I was suspicious after as little as an hour. <laughs> I, was, I was despondent after six hours. After eight hours, I was decided. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say, then, truth or lie? Lie for me. What do you say, Marcus? Oh, I don't know, no, I'm confused. A uh, lie, then. I'll say lie, then. You're going to say lie? OK, David, truth or lie? It is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. David didn't buy a cat and then return it a day later because their personalities clashed. Uh, aloof, rather prickly in temperament and hard to befriend, David still doesn't have a cat. <laughs> Next. <coughs> and it's Greg. 
I used to try and scare school friends by planting a particular drawing in their pockets signifying death. <laughs> What do you think? What was the drawing? It was an owl. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, what, what, what? The owl of death. <laughs> yeah. it's, only, its full title was actually the Hoot Owl Death Sign. Oh. Oh. What would you mean, the owl of death? What was it doing in this drawing? Hoot Owl Death Sign. That old chestnut. I could draw it for you if you like. Greg? Yeah? I've got a pen, I've got some paper. I'll come over there. No, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Don't stand up next to me, it just highlights it. <laughs> Can you... <laughs> so please draw the owl of death. So. <laughs> Don't look at it, David, you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just imagine you're innocently, you went in your pocket, and you're minding your own business. You go, oh, what's this in my. <laughs> oh, oh, no, it's the owl of death! Your friends would find that in their pocket and be. Not my friends, my deadly enemies. Right. <laughs> what, would, what would be the purpose of that? It was uh, for people who had crossed my friend and I. Well, what kind of things would they have to do to cross you? There was an English teacher who we. Uh, Found a bit boring, so he uh, slipped one in his pocket. That was the uh, that was the highlight of the whole campaign. Actually, <laughs> was that the English teacher once stood up in front of the class and was chatting away and went into his pocket and went, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, sorry, everyone. Um, does anyone know anything about this? Because I've just. <laughs> Did you, was the purpose of it to, to scare them? Like you would tell yeah. them that later on it was you? Or? No, no, of course not. We were both nerdy cowards. <laughs> Did you, you created a sort of mythology around what might happen if you found the hoot owl of death in, in your pocket. In, in our minds, anyone who found the hoot owl of death in their pocket would uh, very shortly afterwards meet their demise. <laughs> <laughs> Take a guess. What are you going to say? Is what do we think, true? Phil? Do you think, uh, do you think that is possible? I, th I think it's possible, but I think it's it's a lie. I think it's a lie. Okay. My you say lie. You say lie. What about you, Lee? I say lie. Right, Greg. Yes. Truth or lie? Well, it would be pretty tragic if two uh, boys had spent their youth doing <laughs> that, wouldn't it? True. And it is indeed <laughs> true. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Greg did try and scare school friends by planting a particular drawing in their pockets, signifying death. <laughs> well, that noise uh, signals time is up and it's the end of the show, and I can reveal that David's team are the victors by seven points to three. <laughs> but, of course, it's not just a team game. My individual liar of the week is Greg Davis. Yes, Greg Davis, whose uh, stories were so tall, some of them almost came up to his shoulder. Good night. <laughs>